Hello and welcome back to the Mixed Domain. Uh, this time I wanted to show you a mix from scratch. Um, so I've got a song here called Stepping on Snails. It's uh, from a guy called Gary Davis who's released an album this year. Um, this was the first song that I mixed off the album and uh, I'm just going to take you through it step by step to show you how uh, I went through the whole process of mixing this. Um, I actually mixed it on the console but um, for the purpose of this video I'm just going to show you um, all in Pro Tools, so this is completely in the box, not uh, using the mixing console. Okay, so uh, first off, we're just going to listen to the rough, and then um, we'll talk about how I'm going to take it from there um, into my own uh, my own take on it or my own vision for it. Um, so here is what came to me uh, from Gary. This is what he sent me uh, in the first instance. Um, I have the rough mix here at the top, and uh, we can see. Uh, his file there um, and the size of it um, just zooming in on that uh, so this is the track that we're focusing on at the moment okay so i'm just going to play the rough and uh, listen for any inaccuracies there or, or things that i might want to change um, and uh, perhaps i'll give a bit of commentary as we listen back to this
Okay, so my initial thought on that is that the um, the, the mix seems a bit lopsided. Um, that's the first impression I had. Um, uh, and I spoke to Gary about that and we said, you know, that's something we could definitely fix. Uh, also, the vocal doesn't seem to be as prominent as it could be. Uh, it doesn't seem to be jumping out as much, doesn't seem to be sticking out of the mix enough uh, for the track. Um, and so you're hearing all of those other instruments sort of overpowering it a bit too much. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that's what he was going for, but certainly... You know, uh, I don't feel like it, it's pushed through the mix enough. So that's what I'm going to chase. First of all, I, I'm going to look for getting that vocal as clear as possible uh, and then start to build all of those other other instruments around the vocal to support it, basically. Uh, but the essential part of this track is the, uh, the the percussion here or the drums and then the acoustic guitars and the vocals i think that's what really drives this track uh, then later on into the song you have obviously the electric guitar which takes a, a prominent uh, stage in the mix um, or takes a, a lead role if you like uh, when the vocals aren't playing so uh, up until that phase i want the vocal to really stick out there and then the lead guitar is going to take over uh, when the vocals aren't being heard so my initial feeling on this, um, I just had the the Duro up here as well to check uh, the meters on how loud that mix was. It's it's pretty loud. Um, you know, I don't really need to do much with gain as such, but um, you can tell that this this track has seen some compression already. So uh, now I'm not sure whether that was on the whole mix or whether he did that on individual tracks. But this was, um, I believe, recorded in. Uh, in Fruity Loops or Logic, uh, so one of the two, and uh, then it was exported out as WAVs and then given to me like this. So, so where you, where you're seeing me now, this is where I'm, I'm mixing it from scratch, and uh, I'll keep referring back to this rough mix just to check that um, you know I'm going in the right direction. Um, but I want the whole track to be a bit more clear as well. So I felt like it was a bit dull and not having enough. Um, uh, clarity to the whole mix so we'll, we'll chase that as well so first thing I'm going to do is start throwing up some faders and and uh, like I did in another video just show you how I get a quick balance uh, and putting things in the right positioning uh, with the panning as well uh, but of course never deviating from this lead vocal making sure that is always on top even before we've added any reverb any compression um, or any EQ anything like that so the way I've set up the mix, as always, I've got all of the tracks going to uh, groups here. So uh, we're seeing that. I'll just show you the outputs as well so you can see the I.O. set up here. So all of the uh, individual tracks are going to their corresponding uh, subgroup or submix. So I have that already set up. And then all of these groups here from the drums, even the uh, reverbs as well, but all the drums uh, and every other instrument here on submix is, is all feeding into this mix bus which then goes to the master and the master is where I have that uh, Doro meter uh, so if we look at this SSL that's on the mix bus I'm mixing into this by the way um, so the, the rough mix that you just heard it wasn't going through this it was bypassing the mix bus and going straight to the master fader so I am going to be mixing right into this. It's on a two to one, it releases fast, attack very slow, and then the threshold all the way down and the makeup gain on zero. So as we go through the mix, this might alter, it might change. But in a sense, I just want that analog feel from the SSL. Uh, I'm not actually doing any compression with this yet. It's just feeding through it to try and get some color out of it. Uh, and just so I know that it's going to be fed into that right from the start and not I'm not going to bring that in late on in the mix so I, I want that there right from the beginning and then I'll adjust it as we go so um, I already have all of my um, plugins set up on these subgroups here so uh, if needs be I won't even do any uh, compression or EQ on the, on the main tracks I'll just do it on the actual subgroup or submix and that bypasses uh, the gain staging process here uh, which means we have a lot more headroom towards the end of the mix and that means when I get into the mastering phase I then have a lot more headroom to actually master the track 
rather than trying to make it as loud as possible here in the mix and, and um, trying to get to mastering too quickly. Okay, that's a, a common misconception that people have is they're trying to make the song pump and, and get too excited before it's even got to mastering, which means there's nothing left in the, uh, in the, uh, the noise floor, there's nothing left in the headroom space uh, for, for the mastering to do its job. So, so I'm looking to get a good level here, but I don't want to be exceeding uh, you know, too much uh, so I can actually do some mastering on the track later on.